Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're doing something a bit different. We're taking what look like, well, simple practice questions for an exam, the CBC BDC 2505, and we're going to use them to uncover the real gold inside. We want to get at the core concepts of SAP Datasphere and SAP Analytics Cloud because, you know, it's not really just about passing an exam, right? It's about truly understanding these really powerful data tools. So uh, just for context, the source material mentions the CBC BDC 2505 exam. It's web-based, uh, 30 questions, you get an hour and the cut score is 67%. Oh, and it's in English. But like I said, for us today, this isn't about exam prep. It's, well, it's kind of a roadmap to some really important ideas. Exactly. Think of these questions as prompts, really. They give us a structure to explore. Uh, the critical functionalities, the ways these tools help solve common data challenges that, you know, you probably face. Each one lets us unpack a key concept, and the goal is to get a much deeper understanding of how SAP tools can, well, manage, integrate, and analyze data more effectively. We're aiming for some aha moments here. Okay, sounds good. Let's dive in. First concept uh, from question one seems to be spaces in SAP Datasphere. So let's unpack this. What exactly are spaces? Why are they so, so fundamental? Right. So spaces in SAP Datasphere are um, essentially isolated work environments. Think of them maybe like secure sandboxes within Datasphere itself. Yeah. Their main job is managing data models, assets, and really crucially, access controls. Access controls, okay. Yeah, so this setup lets different teams or projects work independently. You don't have to worry so much about them stepping on each other's toes like uh, overwriting data models or making conflicting changes. The administrators can control exactly who sees what, who can change what within each space. It, uh, it ensures things stay organized and secure, especially yeah. when you've got complex data projects going on. It kind of prevents that data model chaos. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> these isolated spaces but data often lives all over the place right? right how do you bring it together without you know the nightmare of copying everything into one giant pool oh yeah that's a huge challenge and that's where data federation comes in yeah. it's a really key feature in data sphere federation lets you access and uh query remote data sources right alongside your local data but and this is the important part without physically copying or replicating that remote data so you're querying it live where it sits. Exactly. The benefits are pretty significant. You get real-time access, which is huge. You cut down redundancy, and it's just way more efficient because the data stays put at its source. What's fascinating here is how Federation tackles that whole data integration problem head-on. You get freshness, minimal data movement. Mm -hmm. It's pretty elegant. Okay, that is interesting. Less copying, more connecting. So we've got secure spaces. We're integrating data smartly. Now let's talk analysis. You know, sometimes you're looking at a chart, maybe sales dipped and you see the what, but you desperately need the why. Is there something in SAP Analytics Cloud that helps with that, like, uh, automatically? Yes, absolutely. That's where Smart Insights comes into play in SAP Analytics Cloud. It's, uh, it's designed for exactly that scenario. You select a data point in your chart or table like that sales dip, and Smart Insights automatically analyzes it and gives you contextual explanations. Contextual explanations? Like what? Well, it identifies the main contributing factors. So it might mm -hmm. say, this dip was mainly driven by region X or product Y saw the biggest drop. It breaks down the numbers behind the number, essentially. Yeah. It does that initial um, diagnostic work for you so users can understand trends and you know anomalies much faster without having to manually slice and dice the data or write complex queries. It makes analysis much more intuitive. That sounds incredibly useful, almost like having a mini analyst built in. But uh, let's get real for a second. Data is often messy, isn't it? What about inconsistencies? Like, you know, one system says NY, another says New York, maybe another has NY. How does SAP Datasphere handle that kind of dirty data? Ah, the classic data quality problem. Yes, Datasphere has something specifically for that intelligent lookup. Its whole purpose is to improve data quality by linking similar but you know, differently formatted values across your data sets, like your NY versus New York example. How does it do that? Magic. Ah, well, close. It uses uh, machine learning or similarity rules, sometimes called fuzzy matching, to figure out that NY and New York likely refer to the same thing. It then helps you standardize them. And the importance here is huge. It drastically improves data consistency, which is absolutely fundamental if you want to prepare data for reliable, meaningful analysis. You can't trust your insights if the underlying data is inconsistent, right? Makes total sense. Garbage in, garbage out still applies. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about managing specific data issues. Let's maybe zoom out a bit. What's the bigger picture? Is there an overarching SAP approach for like 
unifying data access across a whole company, especially when data is scattered everywhere? Yes, there is. That concept is the SAP business data fabric. It's more of an architecture, a strategy, than a single product feature. The idea isn't to force everything into one central place, like a massive data lake, necessarily. Instead, it creates this um, virtual data layer. A virtual layer. Exactly. It connects and integrates your various data sources on-prem, cloud, SAP, non-SAP, while maintaining consistent data governance across everything. Yeah. The key benefit, you get consistent access to trusted data across all these distributed systems, but without having to physically move and consolidate all of it. So connecting it to the bigger picture, it's really about making data accessible, understandable, and trustworthy, no matter where it happens to live. It's about breaking down silos virtually. Okay, that virtual layer concept is powerful. So you can access data where it lives with Federation and the fabric provides the overall architecture. But sometimes you do need to move and transform data, right? Especially in batches, like preparing large data sets overnight. How do you actually, you know, move it and clean it up in bulk within Datasphere? Right, batch processing is still very necessary for many scenarios. And for that, SAP Datasphere provides data flows. Data flows are the tool specifically for doing that batch-based data movement and transformation, the ETL extract, mm. transform, load. Right. They'll give you a graphical interface, which is nice. You can visually design these processes. You can drag and drop sources, targets, apply joins, filters, calculations, aggregations, build up quite complex transformation logic. So yeah, data flows are how you set up those automated pipelines for preparing data in batches maybe loading a data warehouse or prepping data for specific analytic models. Got it. Graphical ETL within Datasphere. Now, shifting back to SAP Analytics Cloud for a moment, mm -hmm. let's say you've got data, maybe transformed by a data flow, maybe not. When you bring data into Analytics Cloud, are there different ways? Specifically, when you really need to get your hands dirty, you know, clean and shape the data inside SAC before building visuals, what approach lets you do that? Ah, uh, yes. There are different data connection types in SAC. For that specific need manipulating the data after it's brought into SEC, you typically use an import model. An import model as opposed to? As opposed to a live connection, which queries the source directly. With an import model, you're actually making a copy of the data and storing it within SAP Analytics Cloud's own memory or storage. Okay, so you copy the data in. Why is that helpful for cleaning it? Because once the data copy is inside SAC, the import model gives you access to extensive data wrangling features. You can cleanse it, transform columns, create calculations, enrich it, basically, shape it exactly how you need it for your analysis right there in the tool. Mm -hmm. It also supports scheduled refreshes to keep the copy data up to date. But the key is that control you get over data preparation within the analytics environment itself. Right, so you have a dedicated copy to work with and refine. That makes sense. Okay, another challenge. Data can be super technical, right? Database tables, cryptic column names. How do we make this complex data understandable for, say, a business user who needs to find insights but doesn't speak database? How do we make it speak their language? That is a critical bridge to build, and that's the role of semantic modeling in SAP Datasphere. Semantic modeling allows you to define things in business terms. You create business entities, like customer or product or sales order, to find the relationships between them and add business-friendly descriptions and metadata. So you're hiding the complexity. You're abstracting it, yes. You're creating a business-friendly layer on top of the potentially complex technical data structures. Its importance really lies in bridging that gap between the raw data and how a business user thinks and talks about their world. This makes data much more usable and is really key to enabling effective self-service analytics. You know, this raises a good question. How do we empower business users? Semantic modeling is a big part of the answer. Absolutely. Making data accessible means making it understandable too. Okay, we're building up a picture here. Data flows, models. But with data moving and changing, how do you keep track of its journey? If there's an issue in a report, how do you trace it back? How do you know where the data originally came from and what happened to it along the way? Yeah, that's crucial for trust and troubleshooting. Yeah. For that, SAP Datasphere has the Data Lineage Viewer. It's exactly what it sounds like. It gives you a graphical map, a visual representation of how data flows from its source systems through various transformations, views, or models, all the way to its target, like an analytical data set or a report. So you can literally see the path. Exactly. You can see all the dependencies, the intermediate steps. This is essential for things like impact analysis. If I change this source table, what reports will be affected? It's vital for troubleshooting when numbers look off. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, it provides that transparency needed to build trust in the data. Transparency and trust, definitely key. 
Okay, almost there. We've cleaned the data, integrated it, made it understandable, tracked its lineage. What's the final sort of optimized structure within SAP Datasphere that's specifically designed to be consumed by tools like SAP Analytics Cloud for reports and dashboards? What's that endpoint? That would be the analytical view. Sometimes it's called an analytic model, depending on the specific generation or context. But the concept is the same. These are the structures purpose-built for reporting and analysis. They're designed to combine your measures, the numbers you want to analyze with your dimensions, the attributes you want to slice and dice by, like time, region, product. They support calculations, hierarchies, aggregations, all optimized for analytical querying. They're essentially the pre-prepared, business-ready foundation that analytics tools like SAP connect to for creating those insightful reports and dashboards. They're the backbone, really. The backbone for reporting. So maybe the provocative thought to leave you with is this. We, we've looked at these individual tools and concepts, but how might mastering them and really thinking about how they fit together strategically, how might that unlock a completely new level of, well, organizational intelligence and agility for you and your teams in this data-driven world? A new level of organizational intelligence. That's definitely something to chew on. A great place to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive. We hope this was valuable and we encourage you to keep exploring these concepts and see how they can apply to your own work. Thanks for listening.